Are you ready? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 This time on Finnegan's Garage, we are working on my 55 Chevy Bel Air, known as Blasphemy, because Boshears and I are racing Drag Week. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's, drag. it's July. I know, but it's Drag Week. That's in September. I know. We'll be fine. Still, still Drag Week. Yeah. Mm. It's going to be fun. Yeah, it's be fun. All right, see this one? See this one? <laughs> and a huge part of our success plan <laughs> for Drag Week is the trailer hitch that I built for this thing a few episodes ago. Because we're going to use it to carry all of this stuff. Uh, no trailer. Really? Yeah, we're men. No, we don't not trailering? Trailer. No trailer. No. But everybody uses trailers and stuff. Yeah, they're not men. Oh, yeah. Okay. Jeff Lutz got a trailer. Okay, he's kind of, yeah, he's pretty manly. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay, there's, there's a chart for this, right? Mm-hmm. If you go quick enough, you can use a trailer. X plot, right? Oh. Seven seconds or quicker, you can have a trailer and still be a man. You guys with 10 second cars, unless it's a Corvette with no trunk, you really shouldn't have a trailer. Hmm. Just saying. I'm going to get beat up at Drag Week now. Probably. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Let's build this. Okay. So I built this trailer hitch for two reasons. First reason was to haul my drag boat. The second reason was to haul the tools when I want to go drag racing. So right now we're going to use the Miller Spectrum plasma cutter mm -hmm. to hold up the toolbox and the wheels and everything else we want to carry so we can design our new hitch rack. Before we put anything else on there, let's get a measurement, kind of get an idea about how far this board is away so that we can use that as a gauge. Well, let's put the toolbox in. Okay. Let's do that. And this, for you really astute roadkill fans, this is the box that Jake and Eric Roswarski, I think that's how you pronounce their name, gave to me after some low life stole my grandfather's box. My wife's grandfather's box. And I still use it. In fact, their autograph is uh, right there. 2014. March 8th, 2014. Stand up, guys. My, yeah, my faith and humanity was completely restored. Mm -hmm. So our plan here is to not drive on our drag slicks in the rain. And it always rains a drag. So we're going to mount these this part of it. and the toolbox on a nifty rack that I think will make a two-wheeler. We'll mm -hmm. roll into the hotel room at mm -hmm. so nobody can steal my tools again. Mm -hmm. And then the luggage will go in the trunk. And our bodies will go in the car, and we will be pretty much self -sufficient. And then we still have the back seat area for, you know, whatever. And this blocks the view of the taillights. But what we're going to do is get some trailer lights and put them probably here or here or something. Mm -hmm. So that we're too legit to quit. True. And all this will just come off the trailer hitch when we get to the track. We go race and put it back on, on the road. And we have an old hitch bar we can cut up. Mm -hmm. So we can get started on the base of the thing. Mm-hmm. And then just design as we go, and I'm sure we'll have to go to the metal shop at some point. Oh, definitely. Okay. And we got to figure out what we're going to do for wheels. But that's like the minor part. We just need to know how big they are. Yeah, they need to be good ones, because you ever have one of those two-wheelers? It you starts wobbling. Them? It's like a shopping cart front tire. Yeah, yeah, and the tires are always flat. Mm -hmm. Good ones. They need to be like neoprene solid wheels, not air-up wheels. Because I'd like to be able to just grab two handles and lift this thing off and then yep. roll it around. I have an idea for that. That would be cool. Yeah. You hold that. Drag, drag. You have to understand, I've worked Drag Week um, almost every year that I was an employee at Hot Rod Magazine, and I was jealous because all these people were having more fun now than I was. Like, every night they'd get to the hotel, have a beer, high five each other for somehow getting their six and seven and eight and nine second cars, you know, down 400 miles of back road. Mm-hmm. And meanwhile, I was, you know, I was in a rental car, or maybe I was lucky enough to jump in and suffer with somebody like Jeff Lutz. He was cool enough to let me go in his unlimited car a couple times, but it just wasn't the same because it wasn't my car. Mm -hmm. I wasn't racing. This You're year, ready. that all changes. Right. This year, I become a man. I race drag week. Officially. Officially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys out there that think you have street cars. Because you go on a 30 mile cruise around a drag strip and then, you know. True Street. Yeah. The guys yeah, yeah. in True Street. Those guys. Drag week and then you can really claim that you're street. 
let's roll this forward just a little bit. There you go. Now we can get an idea where we're going to be sitting. So, get back away from it. Doesn't this look cooler than a trailer? Yeah, sure. Like if the guys on two lane blacktop hadn't have the entire, you know, rear wall and package tray cut out of their car to fit those slicks and all their stuff, this is what they would have done. Probably. Yeah, in that movie, all of this was cut out. There's nothing in there. This car was Swiss cheese. There was no wall, no package tray. So their slicks would just go all the way in there to where the back seat area was. And that poor girl in that movie was just sitting on the tires. Wow. There's no seat in that car. So, so this sure. right here is the tow bar from the ill-fated roadkill episode involving that 56 Buick that we pulled out of the bushes. Mm -hmm. And then that car never got finished. It actually broke in half. But this is the tow bar we used to hitch it to the ramp truck and get it to my house. We're now going to repurpose it. This will be the backbone of the rack going into our trailer hitch. Time to cut. Oh, you're going to cut it in there? Yeah, the band saw won't be happy about trying to do that. Oh, okay. Probably do it, but we'd probably be here a while. So instead, we're just going to make a lot of noise. Yeah. This blade is so hammered. It's got aluminum in it. Yeah. yeah. It'll still go through it. Yeah, half the teeth on that blade are gone, and it's still cutting. Good blade. Uh-oh. Okay, now the blade is dead. It's official. Hmm. So we get a blade and we go to the steel store? Uh, uh, we'll just use the other, uh, grab the other chuck saw. Let's finish the job in this one. Wow. Fish is dead. These old reliable. I forgot about how many times we practiced welding with that crappy welder when we were in that junker. Grind that At least. All right, lay it on me. Okay, so we have two pieces of tubing here. Okay. With about a three inch gap. Okay. Our frame don't need to be just like a picture frame. It needs to have a center support bar in it for strength anyway. Right. If that bar and everything had two holes through it, you could roll this thing around on its two wheels, sit it on here, stick this pin in, mm -hmm. and then hinge it over and stick the other pin in, and then we're gone. Yeah. Um, right. And then we could figure out the mounting. We could make the mounting pieces onto the frame after that's done. So we've got a lot that we can do right here. Okay. So cool. I guess we need to go ahead and start cutting 45s. And yeah. We just need to figure out our width and our depth. Hmm. Yeah, so if we butt, move this out an inch, we go 18 inches mm -hmm. by 53. That's a perfect size. Okay. And a welder make up the difference. So. I was going to TIG weld going to work like I thought it would. Okay. Yeah, we need to weld it. We need to make it pretty wide. Yeah, I'm think thinking 16 needs, inches. It almost needs to be as wide as that toolbox. It does need to be as wide as that toolbox, come to think of it. Yeah, because otherwise this thing is... So that makes those pieces 28 inches, 26 inches, which is no big deal. The only problem with that is 
the farther we pivoted out here, the mm -hmm. steeper it gets. Yeah. But here's the deal. That doesn't matter. I just thought of this. We're, we're thinking about this all wrong. When you've got a piece like this, this is heavy as it is, mm -hmm. and we radius the ends of our, of our tubing, mm -hmm. what we're going to do is we're going to take this thing and we're going to slide it like that. Anyway, we're going to bring it into this and let it hit that. Then we're going to go like that. This is not going to have anything to keep it from being able to slide on these rails on those 26 inch tubes. So we can help ourselves out by doing it. Out, Once the pin's out, we'll slide it over here and let it lay down like that. Yeah. And it's way less angle. Cool. And, it's, and it's easier to pick up. Yeah, so we'll just use our mechanical advantage and let the leverage do the work for us. So. Um, so then it's got to come all the way. It don't have to come all the way down because we'll, so we'll, hang the, we'll hang the wheels off at about a 45 from the bottom of this piece so that they do hit kind of out. We've so got, you're not going to want to carry this thing on two wheels into the hotel every night because it's got that toolbox and two wheels on it. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So you get it off the car and then set it down on four wheels. You have two more here mm -hmm. and the handle flips up and we roll it. In and then it's like a Lowe's dolly. So yeah, it's like a luggage cart. Yeah. So we'll put, I think these are strong. Oh yeah, these are. They're probably good for 300 pounds a piece. You know where these came from? Same guy I got the Corvette from. Really? How yeah. nice of it. Thank you, Bobby. So no matter what we do, we're out of material. We need to go to the metal store. Mm -hmm. All right. So then let's not use what we have laying around because we don't have enough of it anyway. Let's mm -hmm. use the right stuff. a lot of cutting. Yeah, grinding. Yeah. What well, do you say we start putting it together? I would love to. Progress. Yeah. All right. And we don't know exactly where these cross members are going to go yet. But they fit well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now we can set this on there and the tube coming out of the hitch is actually slide that backward, is actually longer than it needs to be, but we can adjust it right now and figure out where we want this thing to sit. That's a, that's oh yeah, at. that's money right there. So now, so let me no no let me draw real quick. Oh, yeah. We didn't check our cross member height to the tube too. The best part is. Oh, no. Nah. Dude, that's cool. Okay, I'm going to weld this while I do that. Um, you could uh, mount the, um, the wheels to this thing. And then the next time it's back together, we can demo the slide off. Okay. And these wanna, things. How do you want to mount them? Do you want to bolt them or are we going to weld them? Uh, let's bolt them. Okay. Just in case anything ever goes wrong. But I think um, put the swivel ones on whatever side you're going to lift from. That way when this hits the ground, it doesn't try to go right and left. And I'm blind. And turn on the helmet. Here's an important tip, always clean the metal, both front and back. Look what happens when you don't. That, I like that weld, that's a good weld. This is the exact same tube, and that's what happens 
when you hit a dirty spot. Back side of this tube's got oil in it and it just contaminated it. Next thing I know, I'm not giving it nearly as much pedal over here as I was over here and yet it wanted to burn a hole right through it. It's a rookie mistake right there. Now that's the weld. Yeah, that's the kind of weld that makes me happy. The other one, not so much. And the bummer is, this is the weld on the bottom. No one's ever going to see this weld. The one on the dirty tube that I screwed up, that one's front and center. Here's our caster arrangement. That's a five inch caster. This one happens to swivel. I have two that swivel and two that don't. It's made by a company called Faultless. You can find them online. It has a greasable Zerk fitting. That is a 3 16 mounting plate that I cut out of hot rolled steel. What does that mean? Well, you usually hear hot rolled or cold rolled, and the difference is in the way it's manufactured. Cold rolled stuff usually holds a tolerance more. So if the description says it's two inches by two inches, odds are it is. Hot rolled stuff, the tolerance is not nearly as tight and so it's not uncommon for the part to be undersized or oversized so if you're looking for precision look for cold rolled these are four mounting studs that I made uh, I'm gonna put them through the holes that I've drilled weld them from the back side and then that'll enable me to weld this into our frame and then just thread nuts onto this after the caster sits on it just like that note that I've already ground the coating off the material and what this coating does is it pickles the steel, keeps it from corroding when it's in storage, but welds much nicer if you grind that off first. I just used a flap disc there. And if you don't have friends hanging out to help you, you can thread a nut onto a stud, set the plate on top of it, and then go ahead and weld the stud to the plate. Super easy that way. Ooh, it's a big moment right here. Will it work? Oh yeah, it'll work. Matt? You think it'll work? All right, so the pins come out. All right. That was easier than I thought it was gonna be. And then two people slide it and then tilt it. Hey, look at that. And then you roll it into the hotel room. Ideally with the wheels on it. We that, that's the real test. Can we do this with the wheels on it? That would be cool. Well, sure, but let's load it back up without the wheels on it, see how it loads. Okay. Yeah. Do you lose a back right now? Ha <laughs> ha! Nice work, Bush Shears. Thanks. Matt? That's a hell of a design you came up with right there. I like it. Yeah. If you're happy, I'm happy. Oh, I'm happy. Because it works. And it looks cool. Here is the finished product. Look at that. She's a beaut. Now the slicks obscure the taillights of the 55. So we've got these amazing magnetic trailer lights. And note... There's no wire coming off the back of them because they're wireless. I take four AA batteries in each base and then there's a wireless receiver transmitter that plugs into your trailer hitch wiring in the car and these work every time you use the brake pedal or the turn signal. Our tires are held on with a pair of G-Force tire bonnets with ratchet straps. These are about 55 bucks a piece at jegs.com. You can find them at Summit Racing also and Amazon. The trailer lights are about 110 bucks. You can find those at your local Pep Boys also online. The toolbox, it's priceless. Oh, cheers. Spin it around. Let them see it. Let's see. Look at it. Look at it roll. Imagine yourself being like us, rolling this right into your hotel room every night, anywhere in the world. Get it back, sir. Oh, dude. Goes forward. Goes forward. Goes in circles. Look at the action on that baby. Imagine the smile on the hotel clerk's face.
when she sees you wheel that into the lobby. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll be back later on with more amazing stuff like this.